Hello and welcome to the next part of the Unity WebRTC tutorial series. This time we're going to implement a simple media stream over WebRTC, which means that you can send video data from a sender to a receiver in a local area network. As a small bonus, I'll show you how to implement everything for streaming from your Quest device. Stay tuned and Welcome back to the channel. Let's get started. So first of all, I'm going to pick up where we ended last time. This was the data channel. I have a scene here, data channel sample scene, which is basically what you've seen in the last video. And everything we're going to do today is based on that. The screen logger, the log canvas, the client server, the client, and so on. I just restructured the project a little bit. So our server will be the same. We'll jump into that in a minute. And all the data channel scripts, the receiver and the sender are now in a separate folder. And then the same goes for the media stream. There is a simple media stream receiver, simple media stream sender. And all put together in the media stream scene, I just added a few things. First of all, there's a streaming camera. So this will be the camera which streams the content over the network. There is a UI camera, which is basically just for us here to see something this could be more like the player cam or the let's say the xr cam we'll dive into that by the end of the video and everything else is the same the light the global volume the lock canvas is placed in the middle of the screen and i created a simple game object for holding the server and it's important to know that the server should always run on a pc or maybe in the web or something else not on the device which is streaming, so basically a Quest or a smartphone, whatever. The next object is the sender object. This will be active on the sender side. The receiver will activate it as soon as the server is started. I'll just try to give you a better overview. So this will be a manual step here, the event system and the system logger. And for everyone who is going to use Android, just go to edit project settings player settings and other settings, make sure that the graphics API switch to open GLES 3. The Unity docs do not mention that, but I'll tell you that it won't work with Vulkan and make sure that the internet access is set to require. I forgot to mention that in the last video, so you heard it here and everything else will stay the same. And the process will be for deploying to the streaming device, in this case, our sender to deactivate the server and deactivate the receiver and activate the sender. If that is set up, you can go file, build settings, select your scene, Android, build and run it on your device and everything will work. So basically what's going to, what is going on on the sender, there is a cube in here, which will rotate. I'll show you that here. So you can see it a little bit better, which will rotate and be available for our camera to film. A streaming camera, you can see it here. And the start call button will start the streaming on the sender side. So I'm just now switching everything back to the client side. We here our client. The client receiver has a canvas too with a raw image and a small text and everything else is set up in the script. So we'll have the receive image on the receiver side, the camera, which will be streaming and the source image just for showing what is going to be streamed over the network on the center side. The server will act normally and everything else will work as we know it from the other video and Let's see if this will work on Android. Let's get started and make sure to receive the image that the unit is, editor is in focus. Let's start up the server. We see that started up. Our client is connected. And now we're going to start the Android client. We see that Everything started up normal, start call, focusing the Unity editor, and we see that our video is streamed over the network to our Unity client here.
And that's basically the way how it works. It's a little bit complicated, I know, because of all these manual activation steps, but it's just to show you how this is working. The same goes for the XR sample scene. There is a, a log canvas, a server, a receiver, which will be on the Unity PC side receiving the image and the sender for the sending device. In this case, it's my Oculus Quest 3. It's basically the same as before. There's a cube and a sender canvas. I changed the canvases to world space canvases and placed them in the world. And there is the XR rig from the Unity XR components, the camera offset and the normal main camera, as you all know, and to follow my head movement and stream my first person view, I need a second camera, the so-called streaming camera, which is here. As part of the streaming camera parent, which I created with the position constraint and the rotation constraint to the main camera, you can just parent it under the main camera too. Doesn't matter at all, but I just wanted to separate the streaming part from the XR part. In the sender, object there is at the camera stream the streaming camera and as you see it's again canvas with the text and the raw image the same goes for the client which has a client receiver canvas the text and the raw image so the scene setup is fairly simple it's the same as always just a little bit split up where it gets really interesting is the code side so on the code front, I changed a few things, but it's not that much. So you can just easy keep up with it when you followed the video before. First of all, I created a signaling message type to get rid of all the string splitting stuff and have a better overview of how everything is tied together. Then there is a string message class. As always, feel free to pause the video if you wanna copy the classes. And the signaling message class is only creating a wrapper for the message split by the exclamation mark and if the length is smaller than two then we just set the message type to other and give back whatever i got on my server but if it has the right requirement the length of two at least and i can convert the type of the message before the exclamation mark to a signaling message type that i prefer and i can set the type and the rest is the message and this will be returned when querying for this. So that's just a simple wrapper. And what stayed the same is the data channel service. You already know that from the video before. And the data channel server. What I forgot last time was the WebSocket stop method. I added that here just to make sure that everything stops correctly and is free for the next usage. Now the really tricky part more or less comes. We have a simple media stream sender. This script was initially just a copy of the simple data sender, but I added a camera for the camera stream and a raw image, which is from the canvas, which is a child of the media stream sender. This peer connection is the same. I added a media stream object and the video stream track object. You know the WebSocket and the client ID, the Boolean for receiving an answer and the second description. And I added a webcam texture for further use. We won't need the web webcam texture here, but maybe you want to experience why I left it in here. Because we can basically delete it. And then delete the stop method here. But as you can see, it's just for transferring a webcam image. We won't need that here. Maybe you want to add the webcam to your Android phone and stream your phone, phone screen. When going for the start, it's the same. We connecting to the client of a port 8080. I wasn't required to disable my firewall at all. So it stayed active because port 8080 is free on my machine. In it, the client with the port and the client ID. In it, a new WebSocket connection to our WebSocket server and on message, this is the change. We're now creating a signaling message object. We are querying for the type in the switch statement and then set the session description from the message. The same goes for the candidate here. 
and so on and so forth. We connect to our WebSocket. We're creating a new RTC peer connection, candidate in it, the connection, state change negotiation needed here. And this is the new part. We are creating a new stream track from the camera stream. This is just a camera object. And when adding the WebRTC package, it gets a new extension method, which is called capture stream track. I use that to capture a stream 1280.720. I give that target texture from my camera stream to the source image texture so that this camera renders directly to this raw image. And important here, the art, the connection object, the RTC peer connection will have added the video stream track. To finalize this, I'll call it start coroutine and the web RTC update so that the transmission will be updated and the rest is the same. I'm checking if I have received an answer from the receiver. On this draw, I close my connections, the video stream track, the connection at the WebSocket. And if there is negotiation needed, I will create an offer and send it to the server to offer my sending capabilities to all waiting clients. And if everything worked out, establishing a connection, I'll set my remote description. For anyone who still has questions about it, I already linked this page. I will link it again in the video where the signaling process for the RTC peer connection is described in my honest opinion very good. It's an RTC connection available here. It is a create offer method, local description to Bob over the signal channel. In our case, the WebSocket server description set, create answer, sending back the answer. Bob sets the local description and it's our ping. This is the same as before. And when now switching to the receiver side, it's basically the same. I added a raw image. This is again the child canvas object with a raw image. And that's basically all we need to have just to show the video we're receiving. Everything else is the same connection, WebSocket, client ID, offer receiving, IP and port, whatever. Initializing the client, connecting to the signaling server new WebSocket connection and on message again, I'll create a signaling message class just for a little bit easier querying the offer candidate and all other messages that, that come in. As you can see here, I'm converting the signaling message, either at candidate or at offer and just print everything else to the screen. Connection, adding the candidates here, querying the connection state and the Important thing is the on track delegate, which will check if the track that we're receiving is a video stream track. And if that's the case, every time we received something, the texture is mapped to the receive image or raw image on the receiver side. And again, starting coroutine for a WebRTC update. And that's it. The rest is the same. I received an offer, create my answer, I close everything here. And the create answer method also stayed the same. And it's that simple to create a video stream over WebSocket on XR, Android, and PC. And thank you for watching. I hope this was interesting to you and will help you building your streaming application. If you want to see more like that, just leave a comment, click on like, subscribe, and let me know if you want to see more of this. So take care, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.